Hello and welcome to Math with Miss V as we look into scale drawings using pictures to represent real life. In this video, we look at what a scale drawing is and how to use one to determine the real life size of a building or distance. Okay, what is a scale drawing? And this is taken from mathisfun.com and modified, but a scale drawing is a drawing or digital rendering that shows a real object with accurate sizes reduced or enlarged by a certain amount. For example, this is a box of fruit snacks that I have. And in real life, if you measure the front of the box, it measures 9.5 inches by 10.75 inches. But the picture is not that size. If we measure the picture, we can find that the front of the box is 3.05 inches by 3.435 inches. And so we would say our scale or what we multiply or divide by, depending on if we're going to a larger size or a smaller size, is 3.13. Okay, so when are scale drawings used in real life? We use them in maps. We can see the scale on the map in architectural plans where we see the dimensions of the building and in model cars. We can see that this particular car is a 125th scale. And what a 125th scale means that every one inch on the model car represents 25 inches on the real car it's made after. So speaking of model cars, let's look at this. So there are toy brands you might have heard of called Hot Wheels and Matchbox, and they make their cars on a 1 64th scale, okay? 1 64th, let's make that ink a little bigger. And what that means is that every one inch of the toy represents 64 inches on the real life car. So one inch on the toy equals 64 inches in real life. Okay, so this car, the average length of a matchbox or Hot Wheels is three inches. So I can use a proportion and put the actual length of the toy on top over x and then solve. So I'm going to cross multiply. So one times x is one x, which we can write as just x. 64 times three gives us 192 inches. So in real life, oops, the car, this particular model is made after is 192 inches long, or if we divide that by 12, it is 16 feet. Okay, let's look at another example. Now this is an old uh, drawing of a house. It was built, it was planned to be built in 1913. And we can see that the designer, whoever drew this, wanted a 1 8 inch to 1 foot scale. Now we can switch between different measurements. That's what scales allow us to do. So 1 8 of an inch to 1 foot. Now you can leave this as fractions and have a complex fraction. And I will link my complex fraction video below, but I personally like changing fractions to decimals. Um, generally speaking, you don't wanna have a decimal inside a fraction, but it does to me make it a little bit easier to solve. Okay, and when I measured this picture, I got that it was 3.91 inches. So we want to find out how wide the house was in real life when it was built. So we're gonna cross multiply. So 0.125X equals 
and do our multiplication with division. So 3.91 divided by 0 0.125, and we get that X equals 31.28 feet. Now, it is important to point out this might not be accurate to the real house because we don't know the original size of this um, artist drawing. But based on the size of the picture, we can estimate the scale. Okay. Our next example. Okay, this is a tree that is used to build landscape models. A lot of times you'll see them with um, train models. And the creator of this tree says it's nine centimeters tall and it's built on a 148 scale where one centimeter represents 48 meters. Okay, since we know that this tree is one centimeter tall, we can use a proportion to determine how tall it would be in real life. We're gonna cross multiply. So we get one X equals 48 times nine. And we get that the tree in real life is 432 meters tall. Which seems rather large for a tree. I'm not positive that this particular tree is actually made on a 148 scale. That's roughly the times three. That's over 1,200 feet. Um, it's approximately 1,300 feet. So I don't know if a tree grows that tall. I don't think so. But based on the makers uh, website and information this is the size of the tree that they modeled this tree after and that's how you can use proportions to find scales uh, thank you for joining me with this math with miss v